Hi, I'm Katrina. Hi, and I'm Jason. It's very nice to have you here on the lovely Wednesday uh, evening if you're watching this live. Yep, and if you're on the West Coast, it's not evening quite yet for you, uh, but it might be towards the end of your day. Uh, this is our fifth uh, live webinar, and as some of you may have noticed, we um, uh, record all of these and they get uploaded directly to our, uh, our YouTube channel. And we try to keep them, you know, 30 to 40 minutes. Um, today, we are going to draw, uh, excuse me, draw a roof and roof snap. And uh, we're going to go through this one a little more quickly, uh, not in uh, quite as much detail um, as, uh, as, as we have on some of the other webinars, um, because you are able to go back and look at some of the more detailed ones. Um, one of the things that we've covered in most of the roof measuring and estimating uh, live webinars that we've done is uh, adding templates um, to your estimate in the specifications portion of RoofSnap. Uh, and in doing so, um, you see how quickly uh, it, it builds an estimate, a good, better, best style estimate. Um, today, we're going to specifically go in and show you how to create a template so that you can customize the parts and pieces that you want to use uh, in systems of uh, roofing uh, that you use uh, or that you will be able to use in RoofSnap. So, we're going to... Uh, just wanted to mention if you want to oh, see please. Uh, interrupt me. <laughs> this got to interrupt to get a word in here. Uh, <laughs> if you want to see any of the sketching basics, the one on ones, uh, Jason drinking a, a, a beverage. Uh, no, but any of the uh, any of the more in depth uh, sketch videos we've previously recorded, um, they'll be titled like Sketch One on One or things like that. Um, and that's uh, that's for your uh, ease of access there. Like Jason mentioned, we're just going to run through a quick. Uh, this is measuring a roof and roof snap. This is how quickly uh, it can happen, and then start building some templates and show you some of the estimating stuff. Great. Let's click on over to um, our other screen here. And uh, what we're showing you now is the um, main screen here when you're logged into RoofSnap. And I am in our RoofSnap demo account. Uh, so just bear in mind, all of the pricing that we, uh, that we have in here is, uh, is just fake pricing, stuff that we've set up uh, for demonstrations like these. Uh, two ways to start a project. We have tiles. These squares on the main screen are called tiles. Uh, one is the project map and one is uh, start new project. Uh, within the project map, you can see all the pins, and in this case, all the pins of all the demos that we have done all over North America, including, where's that one at? Fiji. <laughs> I just like to look around and see uh, you know, how broad uh, our software has expanded over the last couple years. Uh, we have customers in every state, I believe, including uh, Hawaii and Alaska, mm -hmm. and um, quite a few up in Canada as well, and uh, even parts of the Caribbean. So um, uh, this map view shows us all the projects, but if we hit Find My Location at the top, it is going to zoom in on our, geographical lo on our geographic location. Uh, and I've used this neighborhood a few times in demos before you can see these pins But all I want to show you here is if you're in the driveway of a house and you've used your GPS to zoom in on your location Just press and hold to drop a pin and it will pull in that address for you automatically The other way to start a project is the green tile here start new project Where you can um, select your office. We're always going to use the demo office here uh, and then type in uh, an address uh, of the project that you want to do uh, so as you can see over here on the left, we've already created a project with an address. So I'm going to tap on that and uh, load in here this address uh, down in Grove City, one of the suburbs here in Columbus uh, of a house that we've pre-selected for today's webinar. Uh, right now we're seeing the details page and we can tap on edit, uh, come down through here and add additional customer and job site info, add billing information and all of these fields and even add insurance details uh, if the job is related to insurance. I'm gonna jump here into RoofSnap and let's just sketch this roof up real fast. Uh, Google satellite imagery is the default imagery that we get when we first open up the map. Let's take a look 
at the Apple flyover. And the good news is we do have incredible Apple flyover imagery. Um, this would be more than good enough to um, measure the roof, but since we have a uh, near map, um, we want to uh, always show off the beautiful, high quality imagery that is near map. And you see we have surveys uh, from as recent as March 5th of this year. Uh, going back here to April 15th of 2015. I always like to pick one in the early spring as uh, you'll see the leaves just fall off the trees here in the neighborhood. So if we had a tree in the front yard, uh, the leaves would have fallen off. Now this image, uh, in fact, is not the one that we'll use today. You see for this part of Columbus, the, uh, the uh, camera on the plane must not have been directly overhead because uh, we can see quite a bit of the side of this house and we can also see that the, um, the rakes aren't very straight. Uh, so let's try March 22nd of 2016. It's a little fuzzy, a little better. Let's try September 20th of 2016. Some dark shadows on the back side. So I'm going to keep going September 18th of 2015. And now it's shifted the other way. Good thing we've got a lot of different scans from near map because we can typically find uh, you know, the, the best available image. And I think the September 18th one, what do you think, Katrina? Did you have a preference? Mm, I was kind of partial to that June 5th, but okay. uh, that's just me. All right, that June 5th. Now we can see a little bit of the wall on the side, but it should be okay. Um, it doesn't ultimately impact the measurements, it just makes the uh, outside lines of the drawing just a little bit skewed. Uh, first thing I do is get the image nice and square in the screen, lining up the ridges with the horizontal line. That looks pretty good. And then tap on snap and start drawing in the upper right hand corner. Uh, and I promised I would speed up on this one because we really want to get into the template building. Uh, you know, most of you have probably seen uh, many roofs drawn if you've watched some of our other videos. So I'm going to go into the draw tool here and uh, just start drawing out the lines of the roof with the uh, tap with my left hand in between each line that I draw with uh, my right index finger. Jason's going to speed through this here. but and Katrina's uh, going to dialogue for me. <laughs> as you can see, as he's uh, drawing this out, he's really utilizing those cursor tails because he lined up his image nice and straight when he initially snapped it. Uh, he's passing between uh, the pan and zoom and the draw tool. Uh, and that way, he has a little more flexibility to get in on those smaller details. Uh, and draw draw these things out pretty quickly. He's gone into edges here, uh, and once you're in the edges mode, uh, you can press and hold on any line to delete a line. Uh, so there is an undo and a redo button up on the top right hand corner of your roof snap. Uh, but of course, any any lines that you need to delete, uh, just hop into that edges and press and hold, and that will take care of you. So uh, you can see as he's drawing through here. Um, not uh, not too particular in the way that uh, you know what facet he's filling in first, things like that. You can find out what uh, what works for you. Uh, but just uh, just like myself, he prefers to draw the uh, second story in first, so that way he can draw in these overhangs as he's coming in on that lower section of the roof. Uh, and you'll see as he comes up here uh, on the eave, rounds up the rake. He's going to draw in a little little bit of wall and step uh, right here to account for that overhang section. It's a lot easier to do when you draw out that, uh, that second story roof first. Really find out where you're going. And I really want to focus in and draw this uh, dormer accurately. There's a lot of things going on with the dormer. I don't think we have uh, done a dormer in any of the roofs that we've drawn in our last uh, you know, couple uh, live webinars. So start out by you know, drawing the two facets of this dormer. I'm going to increase the length of that ridge because I really want to see those valleys come right up the middle uh, of that, of that uh, what I believe is going to be W metal here in those valleys. There we go, and turn and come in. And you'll see here I can reposition. So if I've got a 
point that I drew where I didn't quite like where I put it, I can come back in, put my cursor, just kind of hover on top of it for uh, a couple, like about a second, and then pick it right back up and move it. I could then draw another line right off that spot if I needed to. And in this case, uh, still not incredibly happy with the top of that ridge, so let's bring it down just a hair and bring it to the left and make it nice and straight. Now I'll go back in and use the cursor tail and make the ridge nice and straight as well. Now, when I draw a dormer that is completely surrounded by a larger roof plane, I have, in essence, drawn two more shapes. We'll call them uh, uh, facets uh, within the larger facet. And the software doesn't immediately know that, uh, that there is a wall here and that there is no roof beneath these two facets here, uh, with the exception of the overhangs. So what we're going to do is start off by coming in and drawing in the step wall that comes up alongside. We're going to put in about a one foot overhang here. The uh, roof to wall flashing, which is a horizontal line where apron metal would go across the front and the other step wall up the right side. Now, some users would have a tendency to go ahead and attach those. Uh, and indeed, they do attach. But if we draw attaching lines there, now we have drawn one, two, three, four additional shapes uh, within that uh, larger plane. And that starts to get a little out of hand. So when you're drawing the step and wall of a dormer, we do recommend leaving them unconnected. It makes it a lot easier because you'll see when we switch here to facets, we have, uh, I'm going to use the remove button here to uh, show what each one applies to. So the right one is the right side of the dormer, the left side is left side of the side of the dormer, and the larger one is the whole facet. And you'll see that the dormer gets darker when we highlight the whole facet. That is uh, currently assuming that there's an entire roof plane beneath this dormer, but we know that's not the case. So we're gonna go into facets here and tell the software that this is indeed a dormer, labeling both the left and right side of dormer, and now that has removed the surface area here uh, beneath these planes. I'm gonna go ahead now and pause from the facets and uh, label up all these lines and turn it over to Katrina here as I uh, can't seem to multitask half the time <laughs> when I'm labeling and, uh, and doing all that at the same time. So uh, let's talk about sublabels a little bit. So as you can see, uh, Jason tapped on Eve, and when he double tapped, he can grab uh, a variety of sublabels and tap, uh, touch on those lines that he wants to adhere those labels to. Um, so he's grabbing rakes, and he puts some uh, rake edge metal on there, and he's touching on all the rakes to label them, uh, and this is going to tell us uh, exactly how many linear feet of, uh, you know, of rake as well as rake edge that we're going to need. Uh, same with, uh, with ridge vent here uh, and things like that. So you can tap in and, and choose what applies uh, to you and your, uh, your neck of the woods and, and uh, your company, whatever, uh, whatever products and things that you need to account for. You can do that here in RoofSnap uh, just by labeling those lines. And you'll see when we get to the estimating portion, uh, based on those line labels and those sub-labels, you'll be able to uh, put in materials and things like that in the specification screen uh, that will be assigned to just those measurements in this particular project. Uh, so very useful here. As Jason goes back to relabel this wall, you'll see his pre-selected sub-labels are already highlighted for him. He doesn't have to go back in and pick those out. He can go ahead and just label that wall. Looking good. Yeah, not too bad. So we don't have pitches on anything yet, uh, but one thing I want to point out is non-horizontal lines, like rakes and valleys and hips uh, and step walls, will all get longer with respect to the pitch of the roof. Um, the, the software knows how to calculate the additional length when uh, you know the line is indeed going up a 412 pitch or a 712 pitch uh, or what have you. Uh, but one thing I wanted to go in here with regard to this dormer one more time is we've drawn in 
uh, unconnected step walls and uh, apron walls here. And we still do need to account for the overhang. So I want to draw your attention up here to the settings button. We haven't clicked into this yet, I don't think, in any of our live webinars. And so I want to show you that um, you have some settings here. If you want your lines to snap uh, more quickly, this tolerance here can be increased. Uh, I believe 25 means it will snap most readily to the nearest point. Uh, I have mine at 10. Uh, you can adjust line color, line width, uh, and then dormer overhang. So for this dormer, uh, as I said before, we're looking at about a one foot overhang. It's going to recognize the eaves and rakes and where there would be overhang and calculate the additional quantity by setting the dormer overhang at one foot. Here, if you're left-handed uh, as well, if you need to move the cursor so that it's offset to the other side, uh, for left-handed users, make it a positive number. For right-handed users, um, I use right around negative 90, 85, somewhere right in there. Um, and then last but not least is the map scale override. I'm not going to click on that right now, but if you do need to adjust the scale of the map for whatever reason, uh, you can do that by tapping on override and going in then and setting a new scale. Uh, for any of you who saw our uh, video yesterday about using a drone image, setting the scale on a drone image is the exact same functionality uh, that you'll have when you override the map scale here. I'm going to go back up to the top and hit save. And now we have um, uh, added the one foot overhang on dormers and we've labeled our dormers. Let's jump back out. NESW buttons across the top. Let's see. Uh, those have not loaded in yet. Oh, yeah, they have. So we can see some Bing directional images right here uh, for reference purposes. You know, if you're looking for uh, uh, bay windows or um, any sort of little kick out uh, ears and wings and things like that. You might see them more easily from a directional image than here from the top down view. Uh, street view in the bottom right corner. Let's see. Uh, we are on Lombardo Street, and this is the this is the house. Mm -hmm. oh, dormer there. Great. So that's the dormer that we just drew. So as I mentioned. Uh, you saw us draw in that little apron section here. That's the light blue colored line. And then the longer apron here across the front. And you know what? Good call because that apron totally needs to be replaced. <laughs> <laughs> and we do have less than a foot overhang. I would say that's more like six to eight inches. Uh, so we could draw that in a little tighter or change it in the settings that we just looked at. Uh, but we have the step walls up both sides of that, uh, of that dormer there. While we're here, let's go ahead and use the Google Street View pitch finding tool and see what the pitch of this front-facing uh, gable dormer is. Wow, if that isn't like dead on 1012, I'd feel really comfortable with that. However, we always recommend that you verify pitch on site with the proper pitch gauge. Be careful using those camera pitch gauges. Uh, if you know how to use them and get them at the proper height, um, you may find that um, if you're, you know, over here, well below the roof and you're trying to use your pitch finding camera, uh, it's not always terribly accurate. We recommend you get straight ahead or set a ladder and climb up there and when you're checking the, the layers, uh, throw one of those two foot pitch gauge levels right on the roof. And, uh, and capture a really accurate uh, pitch value. You know, the difference in squares from like a four to five is, is nominal, but the difference in squares from a 10 to an 11, uh, you know, can be substantial. So we definitely don't want you to fall back on these tools every time, but in a pinch, um, they're pretty close to, uh, uh, you know, production values. So 10, 12 in that one as well. I want to now look at the last supplementary imagery which is going to be Apple's 3D imagery environment, which we access by tapping a little button in the bottom right-hand corner. It drops a pin on the roof for us, which is really helpful. And we can use two fingers to sort of uh, pan around the image. And then if we take and slide up and down with uh, two fingers on the screen here, we can change from a straight overhead view down to uh, more of a bird's eye view. And what I want to do is uh, look straight down one of these ridges. 
putting my crosshairs just above where the rakes meet the ridge, tapping the magnifying button here in the upper right hand corner and zooming in. And I wanna see that ridge run straight down my uh, center vertical line. Now I have another pitch tool in the upper left hand corner. In this 3D environment, we can pan and zoom around the house and uh, you know, get straight on any gable end. And uh, that looks like a 712. And we found this tool to be highly accurate. Uh, that being said, always double check when you're on site. So sevens and, uh, and tens, sevens yep. and tens. All right, so now that we know the pitches, we're gonna go back to facets. We're gonna start with, um, well, there's, there's the same number of each. So <laughs> let's start with uh, the tens. And just tap apply to all, put 10 on everything. Uh, because I feel it's easier than just to go back and grab your sevens and tap on the tens that need to be changed to seven. And then we have that one there in the middle. And just as a reminder, if we use the remove tool, we can see that it applies to the larger facet. That is the one that needs to be made a seven. So we tap it to toggle it to zero and tap it again to change it to seven. Now we have uh, a completed roof drawing. The only thing we're missing are the accessories because you know we want to we want to build an estimate. Um, we won't really build a detailed estimate on this one. We'll you know we'll load in a couple templates, but the pins that's where we're going to be adding accessories. So quite a few off ridge vents here. They look like uh, slant backs to me. They could be standard hat vents, but let's grab some slant back vents for today and drop one slant back vent on every single location. Looks like we've also got uh, one plumbing boot for sure. And we'll call it a one inch to three inch. And then I believe there's also a B vent on there. So let's go to fluent chimney caps. And let's add a three to five inch type furnace vent cap. You know how those like to fall off the roof uh, and put that on there. There's a chimney on the far right. So let's go to chimney flashing. Um, that was brick. So um, oh, we don't designate in this office for brick versus stucco. Uh, but let's add a large chimney flashing kit on the chimney. Uh, all of these pins can be customized when you build out the materials in your office. So if you need stuff we don't have, or if you don't want stuff that we have in here, uh, it can be fully customized as you see fit. Um, any pin, if you press and hold on it, you can take a photo. So we're just here in the conference room. We've got a glass table. Uh, I've got an iPad here in front of me. It's made out of old barn wood. So uh, we'll just take a picture here in the corner of the laptop. Tap on use photo. And uh, let's also, add some notes to that pin. So here is what the vents look like. <laughs> and my keyboard is terrible. It adds all of these unwanted periods and punctuation. Uh, so I'll get a new one, I think. <laughs> I think you should. <laughs> Um, but to save this note, uh, just tap anywhere outside of that note field, and that's going to save that note for you. Yep. Um, just as one more example, I'm going to press and hold on the chimney pin. And again, you could add a photo taken with your iPad or, um, you know, sync your iPad and, and go up there with your iPhone. And, uh, and then sync your iPhone, and you can take photos and uh, pin your images directly to the drawing from a device that might be a little easier to, uh, to use if you are climbing up on uh, you know, a 712, 1012 mixture roof like this. So now we've got the pins in, we can tap done in the upper right hand corner and save this project with all of our pins. It's gonna pop up a uh, waste calculator that we have uh, just built pretty recently in here. Uh, one of the uh, new features that, uh, that we just came out with. Um, so it's going to tell us, uh, and for architectural shingles, uh, the cut waste. I thought we'd turn the video back on for just a second. Um, you know, it's always a matter of your Wi-Fi connection. And uh, here in the evenings at RoofSnap, it uh, seems like the Wi-Fi does slow down just a little bit. Uh, so you guys don't get too bored. Uh, we will click over a little more and, uh, and share our personalities and our, and our faces with you as we uh, you know, wait on some of the syncing here. 
Um, but actually, it didn't take that long. So we'll jump right back over here to the screen. And uh, I'm hoping that's working, that we are indeed <laughs> switching back and forth, right? <laughs> uh, you'll see that it has suggested 9.15% uh, uh, as a cut waste. Uh, that does not include hip and ridge cap or starter. Uh, and here are the calculations that it uses. Very consistent with other waste calculators you may see in the industry. Uh, for example, I have been made aware that uh, Xactimate does have a waste uh, auto waste calculator, uh, and this would be consistent with those numbers. So we're going to say yes. But if for some reason you don't want to use those waste, uh, that waste percentage, Tap right into measurements and adjust the waste manually um, based on you know, your expertise. We can review the measurements. We can add a measurement here for downspouts, uh, which since I have put in gutters and gutter toppers, I'm going to go ahead and uh, add my linear foot total of downspouts. Let's say it's 150 feet. Uh, and that's the only measurement that we're going to estimate uh, frequently in roof snap that has to be added manually. Um, because again, we have a top-down view, uh, not a three-dimensional, you know, walls view. Uh, so we do have to manually put in the downspouts. We can then go to documents and create a very handsome-looking sketch report. Uh, this is something you may email to insurance adjusters, your production department. Uh, you can save it to a Dropbox or a Google Drive. Uh, or just be able to access it here uh, within RoofSnap. I'm going to open that up. Oh, by the way, if you ever need to delete something, the sliding left and right, that's a common way to delete a file here within RoofSnap on iOS. We have um, our logo at the top. If you upload your own, it would be your own company logo. The primary photo from NearMap, our northeast aspect uh, photos here from Bing, northeast, southwest. Pitch breakdown, measurement details, uh, category measurements, total squares, and then the breakdown by area, all the accessories that we put on the roof, and the notes and photos that we've attached as well. If you had 50 photos and 50 notes, they would all uh, appear here on this document. With the share button in the upper right corner, this allows you to email it. Dropbox, Google Drive, uh, or open it in another uh, PDF uh, editor of some sort. We do, uh, we do really recommend PDF Expert. It comes in handy a lot. Go into specifications. You'll see that steep charges, which we have set up in this office, are loaded automatically. We've got 2.8 uh, almost uh, for 10-12 steep charge and the additional labor uh, marked up here. And the 712, also the additional labor marked up here as uh, retail pricing. And all the accessories that we pin to the roof have been loaded into the estimate. And shingles or adding materials here one at a time. Let's go ahead, since we don't have any gutters in a template, let's go ahead and add the gutters. Okay. Jump on add material. I'm going to scroll to the bottom. If I wanted to, I could just type in the search bar and search for what I'm looking for. But let's add some residential 5-inch K-style. Let's add some 5-inch gutter screens. Let's add 2 by 3 inch downspouts. And um, what we're going to do is uh, A-style, B-style, tile adapters, outlets, and one, two, two inside miters that I can remember. But we might have to come back and add some more. Now, these quantities um, are, let's see, I bumped the wrong one, editable. So if we know we need six of the A styles, we hit that. Then we go to the B style plus and minus button, and let's say we need six of those. And then the tile adapters, let's say we need four of those. I apologize, I'm opening up the wrong window when I miss that button. There we go. And for outlets, we're going to need four of those. And inside miters, two of those. Great. Now let's throw some templates on top, and you'll see all these other items will be added to the templates that we have created here. Let's do, uh, is, it a, is, it, is it a day for Owens Corning? 
Is that where we've left off, or is it a certainty kind of a day? Hmm. I think it's an Owens Corning day. Okay. We uh, we don't make any. Uh, um, Help me out, Katrina. What don't we? We, we are know? not biased yeah. when it comes to no, distributors <laughs> <laughs> and manufacturers as well. Yep, we take uh, take a, a little bit from here and there on each uh, each webinar and yep. uh, stay so, non partial. Yeah, there's the Owens Corning Supreme. It loaded it in here to the specifications. Now let's uh, see. It should pop up and ask us. There it is to select a color. Uh, desert tan for the three tab then we jump right back into the templates and let's grab the uh, true definition duration and now that template will load in and I'm going to highlight that one now and it'll change the specifications you know the the good was just 15 weight felt with standard hip and ridge and standard starter but the better is going to have uh, some synthetic underlayment uh, the nicer starter uh, the nicer hip and ridge, and we'll do um, Harbor Blue on that one. And then we'll load in one more template, the uh, Owens Corning mm, Storm Impact Resistant. And there we have our third template. You can add up to five. We recommend uh, two or three. Uh, four and five on an estimate document does begin to look a little busy, uh, but that would be your prerogative. If you, uh, if you want to add five options, it's definitely possible. Switch to the Owens Corning Storm IR, scroll up and down, and you'll see that um, we then have to select one more color, a state gray. Now there's more customization we can do here within the estimate. We've definitely gone into that detail for some of the other webinars. Uh, don't forget to tap on the I button if you want to add custom line items, or just experiment with adding additional products. Those custom line items are good for discounts, upcharges, uh, discounts as a percentage, markups, O&P, uh, any additional charges you would need to add or any discounts you would need to add to modify the final price for each template. Now, what I want to do is show you now how to create your own template. So in order to do that, all we have to do is start a new project. It doesn't need an address. We're going to just call it template and click on done. We don't have to go to roof snap. We don't have to draw or measure anything. We just go straight into the specifications. And here, the plan is to build out a list of items that are going to be used frequently um, on roofs. You wouldn't add hat vents to a template because you never know if you're going to have certain kinds of hat vents on the roof. Those are added by pins anyway. Uh, so let's start with the shingle. Well, we just uh, we just made an Owens Corning estimate, so let's uh, let's try a certainty template. Let's make a landmark certainty landmark template. Uh, we'll tap on that. We do pick a color, but it is moot because we'll reselect the color whenever we add this template to an estimate, and we tap on done. So the shingle is in there. Then we go to add material. So I always like to assume a few things. One, we're almost always removing and disposing architectural shingles. So let's make that the remove and dispose for this template. We could make another template with the same except changing and removing and disposing three tab uh, and just call that the landmark with three tab removal. You can make as many different variations of the same template that you want uh, if you have lots of different circumstances. A second layer typically wouldn't put that in a template unless you're in a region where everything you tear off has a second layer. Roof decking, wouldn't add it to the template, but ice and water shield, absolutely, because you know that you're gonna be adding ice and water shield um, based on you know, your region uh, and your company's um, methodology. So Certainty has uh, one called Winter Guard. So let's select the Winter Guard and then let's go to Underlayment. And uh, Certainty has diamond deck, so let's add the diamond deck. Let's use plastic caps to secure our underlayment. And let's use the Certainty Swift Start Starter. Um, if you're more commonly doing a W Valley Metal, add that. If it's more commonly a closed valley, add that. I'm going to select the closed valley, very common here in Columbus, Ohio. And then uh, let's go with one and a half inch T-style drip edge for the eaves and for the rakes. 
Step flashing, well, the last company that I worked at always replaced the step flashing instead of reusing. So we'll go uh, install um, five by seven inch step flashing aluminum. And apron, they always replace the apron metal unless it was under stucco, which was less common. So let's add uh, install apron flashing. Chimneys, we don't need that because uh, it's going to be pinned to the roof. But shingle fasteners, absolutely. Let's do uh, six nails per shingle. And then grab the certainty shadow ridge. That's a more handsome looking uh, ridge cap there. Ridge vent. So certainty has, oh, I should know this off the top of my head, but I'm actually not seeing a certainty brand. We may not have one in here. Let's go with the generic. Replace with shingle over ridge vent. Uh, off ridge vents, these are pinned, so we don't need those in a template. Same with plumbing boots, but paint and seal it. It's very common just to add one tube and one can of, uh, of NP1 and spray paint, uh, respectively, directly to your template. Uh, and then maybe you know you always need uh, a dumpster on every roof, so you could add that to the template. Blue cap skylights, you know, again, those are uh, pinnable items. Low slope roofing, again, you might need some of these systems from time to time. Um, gutters, you could add gutters to a template and have one version of the template with gutters and one template of the version without. Uh, I'm not going to add gutters to this template here for the time being. So when we tap on done, all of those items that we selected are loaded up here into our non estimate. And we can immediately turn it into a template by hitting the Save button here at the bottom. And I'm going to give it a name. We're going to call this Certainty. Capitalize the T, I think. Mm -hmm. Landmark. Um, make a little note here, just in case we need to remember that this does use the synthetic underlayment. And if we want to actually put a category on it, I would call this a better. When we hit Create Template, it's going to save it and become immediately available to use on any other estimate by tapping the window, uh, excuse me, the folder in the bottom left corner. When we scroll down to the bottom, you'll see that, um, Oh, it's alphabetized. I forgot. It's in alphabetical order. So better is the certainty landmark synthetic right there. Now, if you make a template and you don't like how it turned out and you find out that you're not going to use it, you can't change it, but you can simply delete it. Uh, we'll go back out here to uh, the main screen where you can uh, see your name and your company. And we'll come down here to the bottom where the little I button exists. And we're going to go to the Manage Templates. So I'm going to go here, and I'm just going to delete that synthetic one that we just made. I'm going to go back to the project that we were just working on, Template. And if I wanted to remake this template, but correctly, if I had made a mistake, I could go right back into Specifications. Let's say I didn't want six nails per shingle. I'll delete that. Jump right back into Add Material. I'm going to go down to my fasteners here. I'm looking. You know, that's why we use big images. We call it visual estimating. Uh, you begin to memorize the picture of what you need so you can add it quickly. Let's go to the four nail. Tap on that. Click on Done. Now the four nail is here at the bottom. We can go back, hit the little Save icon, and make a new template. And quickly and easily revise uh, and change and make new templates uh, whenever you need them. Um, you know, make 10, 20, 40 templates, as many as you need. Um, but that's all how that looks. Katrina, let's uh, pop back over to the camera. I'm going to have a little, going to have a little drinky poo over here. And, uh. <laughs> so, uh, so that's template making in a nutshell. Of course, all the, uh, <laughs> all the materials and specifications are customizable on uh, your account. Uh, and once those are in there, uh, template making and good, better, best estimates. Uh, you can do this stuff in in minutes. Yep. You know, take some time to uh, you know set up your materials, and we're going to dive into that tomorrow. Um, that's our Thursday webinar. Is um, you know doing uh, uh, custom account setups. We'll talk about uh, putting in material pricing, labor, 
um, setting your tax rate, uh, show you how to create multiple virtual offices if you have that kind of need. Some of our customers, you know, work on on a state line where they're doing business in two different tax uh, regions, and they need to uh, create pricing uh, for one area and different pricing for another. Um, we have some companies who uh, have DBA set up where they uh, do business under different names in different locations uh, for different reasons, and. Um, you know, having multiple offices uh, takes care of that situation. Uh, so we'll dive into all of those specifics in our webinar tomorrow. Of course, we have some pre-recorded ones that you'll find on our YouTube channel. Um, I think that's all we're going to touch on today. We created the uh, the template. We showed you how to make some changes to it. Um, we sped through, and uh, and I drew a roof in like under thirty minutes. Yeah, it was the first time I've done that. While um, talking some of the time. Yeah, yeah, while talking some of the time. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but if you can't tell, uh, you know, Katrina and I, we both, uh, I hope I can speak for you, but uh, we love what we do. Uh, we're passionate about the industry. Uh, I've worked in it for 15 years. Uh, and the funny thing is Katrina knows just as much, if not more, about it than I do. Uh, and, and she didn't come from a, a roofing background. She uh, has a background in, uh, in retail and in management. Uh, so... Uh, we're we're super thrilled that she is on board with us, but uh, we uh, yeah thank you we love we love what we do here at Roof Snap we do. and um, we have a lot of fun, but we work you know obviously a lot of late nights and um, we're uh, continuing to uh, improve the software. Um, we've got some big releases coming up, so let's spend the last couple minutes talking about that. Uh, for those of you who are. Uh, excited about how nice uh, and sharp the near map imagery is, like mm -hmm. I am. Me too. Um, you know, for the last couple years, in order to use near map in Roof Snap, you had to uh, have a subscription with near map. They uh, handled all their own, you know, billing and all of their own pricing and all that. Um, but we have uh, worked out a deal and uh, come to agreement on uh, how it's all going to work, and we will be able to sell a near map image uh, only when you need it directly to you for five bucks right at the project level. So if you're in there and you're looking at the Google image and it's no good, tree coverage, um, distorted, what, what have you, uh, a little window is going to pop up and say near map is available for this address uh, and if you'd like to purchase a near map image for that single project. Um, that should be Fingers crossed, maybe two weeks out, uh, and we'll launch that with the new big uh, update that will come to the iOS store, uh, the app store. All the beautiful imagery that you get to see on these webinars will be available to you yep. very shortly. We're yep. very, very excited about that, as I'm sure you are as well. Yeah. Um, the near map imagery is, in fact, already available to you. Uh, at a per project price, uh, and that's the other big update. So we have fully launched, we're done with our beta, we're done with all of our tests, and we have launched customer-wide our SketchOS. Uh, nobody knew how to pronounce that. It was always like, <laughs> SketchOS, SketchOS. Uh, we're calling it SketchOS, our sketch ordering service. Um, if you go to uh, roofsnap.com and you're the admin on your account and you log in, you'll see the SketchOS tab right at the top of the screen to the far right. And if you click on that, you can order a roof uh, pre-drawn, uh, pre-sketched directly from us. Now, we're not like some of our competitors where we will um, send you a PDF attached to an email. That's not how we deliver this. Uh, you know, it's still about ownership. It's still about uh, changing the pitch values if you see fit. It's still about um, customizing, you know, let's say you send us an order and, uh, and it's got a detached garage. Well, we're going to draw that every time. And you're going to maybe go out on a lead and the customer says, no, 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 not the garage. The garage is fine, just the house. Uh, so in RoofSnap, since we're going to be uploading that SketchOS project into your account, you'll be able to quickly go in delete out the lines of the garage, and create a measurement report just on the main building that you need. Excuse me, that being said, um, if you see that the pitch value uh, is ever so slightly off, maybe there was a uh, bay window and we put a five on it, but it was actually a four, you'll be able to go in and adjust those pitch values uh, right within RoofSnap and then generate your own measurement report 
uh, or use the measurements to create um, your estimate and your contract right there. So two Sketchos projects. Try that again. Two Sketchos products. <laughs> <laughs> we have the half snap. So a half snap, when you order it, it's $9. Regardless of size, uh, for any residential roof, um, this is going to remain true for multifamily and commercial as well. A half snap, all we're going to do is draw the outline of the roof, put in the predominant pitch, and that's going to give you squares. So if you estimate on per square pricing and you need a $9 uh, roof measured and you're busy and you don't have time and you want somebody else to do the sketching uh, who's not you, send it to us, $9 half snaps. Um, we get those turned around typically within two hours. Uh, Monday through Saturday, we're not currently sketching on Sundays. Um, that's our day off. <laughs> I need one. <laughs> At least one. Um, the full snap. So the full snap has uh, some uh, tiered pricing. It's based on squares of the final, uh, final, uh, final squares of the roof, but of course not including the waste. Uh, so if it is uh, zero to twenty squares, that is going to be nine dollars. Yeah, same price. So if it's a little itty bitty roof and you want to upgrade, it's the same price, uh, either a half snap or a full snap. Uh, Ten, excuse me, twenty to thirty squares is fifteen dollars. Thirty to fifty squares is nineteen dollars. Uh, fifty to eighty squares is thirty five dollars. And anything over eighty squares. Uh, just go ahead and order it. Uh, we're going to charge you what? Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, if you order one and it turns out to be over 80 squares, we're going to call you and we're going to say, hey, you know, uh, it's a little, you know, it's 90 squares or something like that. Um, and, and we'll give you a quote right over the phone or shoot you a quick email. Um, or you could just call us if you have an address in mind and, you're, and you want pricing before you place the order. Uh, we're happy to, uh, we're happy to uh, give you that quote right over the phone. Uh, let's talk about phone numbers and email addresses and all that stuff real quick. Yeah, so you can always reach us at uh, emailing support at roofsnap.com yep. uh, or call us at one eight seven seven roofsnap And that uh, is uh, 877-766-3762. But, of course, you'll find this on our website, uh, which is the most important bit of information. So uh, go to our website, roofsnap.com. On the main home screen, if you haven't already signed up, we have the free 14-day trial. Uh, nobody buys RoofSnap without trying it for at least two weeks first uh, and making sure that it's a good fit. Within those two weeks, you can add as many sub-users within your company as you want. You can have the whole team trying it uh, for free. Uh, get nine, 10 sub-users uh, and you, and you're all drawing three a day. I mean, within two weeks, you could really uh, test out the software, uh, make sure it's a good fit for your company. Uh, and then at that point, you know, after two weeks, we'll have a conversation and we'll probably have a few conversations in between. Um, if it's a good fit, we can talk about uh, month to month pricing, which is always $99 per user. But if you want some discounts, uh, you know, we'll, we'll talk about, uh, some annual plans. Uh, we've got two users. There's a discount at two users. Uh, when paid at 12 months uh, at a time, at five users, at 10 users, uh, or if you're uh, if you're watching this and you know that your you know your company is one of those uh, 50, 75, 100 user, uh, you know lots of salesmen out in the field, lots of different markets, uh, we'll do some custom pricing for uh, you know for those uh, for those types of situations and send you a quote. So RoofSnap.com, you'll see the 14 day trial. Please. Uh, you know, go ahead and sign up and, and give us a call and we'll, uh, uh, we'll, we'll help you wherever we can, try to make it easy for you. We are looking forward to hearing from you and any, uh, any feedback you have for us is always welcome. Absolutely. Thanks so much. Thanks for joining our live demo. I'm Jason here at RoofSnap. And I'm Katrina. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks a lot. Bye, guys.